Travis Willingham is one of the coolest voice actors out there. He's been in loads of things I never even knew about. And like many voice actors, I didn't know who the heck he was until I looked him up on IMDb after watching Critical Role and was like, oh my god, he's Thor and Knuckles! Wow, he's actually been Thor a lot. Travis is still a very talented and skilled voice actor, which if you ask him, he'd probably say something like, it's just dedication, practice, and a lot of trial and error, or something like that. Through Critical Role, we've been able to learn more about Travis and who he is as a person, which you won't get from watching every single animated Avengers cartoon out there. Travis playing his characters on Critical Role show his true colors, and that's what we're here to do. As much as I'd like to go into his voice acting talents, Travis stands out to me as one of the best players I've ever seen to play D&D, and I'm pretty sure he's not experienced in this. Travis is just a very respectful, understanding person that plays this game like a goddamn pro. I also feel that Travis seems to be a little underrated in, at least my eyes. Maybe I just want to appreciate this beautiful, beautiful man and his fit arms and trimmed beard and jawline that makes- <clears throat> Let's take a page from Travis and how to be a better player in D&D. I don't recall any moments that Travis has struggled with any rulings Matt has given him. When Matt says what happens, Travis takes that for a fact, even if he doesn't like it. Still, well, you're still in, within his attack range. He's, he's he has the glaive, so you do have disadvantage on Eldritch Blast. Uh, I'm gonna fucking move out of his attack range. Right? Does that give him an attack of opportunity? Yeah, it does. Yeah, I'm doing that anyway. Uh. Travis has oftentimes trusted Matt's ruling over his own, even if it's wrong or screws him over. There are times when he tries to get his way, but man, look at how this guy plays it off. Like a charming pro. Never does he argue or pull a fast one on Matt or try to confuse him. He simply asks, gets his answer, and sticks with it. So sure, be respectful. We all know how to do that. It's pretty simple. Sometimes, I don't think it is. There's many times when I've seen myself and even other players in D&D get frustrated, upset, and downright angry at their DMs and players. And it sucks! It can ruin a game! Making others feel bad for you in D&D doesn't just change how we're going to play the game, it changes how we're going to treat that person from now on. Knowing that if something doesn't go this person's way, we better be prepared for a struggle. Has Travis ever gotten upset in Critical Role? Yeah, of course! Does he make it everybody else's problem? No. Travis, I'd just like to say directly to you, you've got patience beyond anyone I've ever seen. Your ability not to toss your dice across the room or get upset is astounding, and I want to say that it's your incredible honed skill of being a good person, or maybe it's that you don't care that much about D&D, I don't know, I don't know you. That's the big lesson to take from this. He doesn't make his problem everyone's problem. When Grog or Ford takes damage, he's not immediately go, heal me, heal me, oh, I'm low on health, heal me. Whenever Travis fails at something, he doesn't beg for others to succeed or give him an inspiration or help him out. He's throwing in the dark in the direction where two guys and he's threatening them and hitting me. Yeah. Yeah. You guys have done it before. Fair enough. <laughs> Unconscious I go. Right. Fuck! Oh shit. Fuck! Maybe on the down low, he tries to remind everyone about certain things, but for the most part, he plays like he's on his own. And his friends know this about him, and they worry about it. Often, they are asking about if he's taken damage or if he needs help. He doesn't need to beg for anything because he respects his friends to figure it out. Now, sure, maybe Travis just does this for the show. Maybe he's being professional because that's how he wants to portray himself when playing Critical Role. This doesn't exclude the fact that we all can't learn from this. Being a respectful player not only keeps your friends enjoying playing with you, it keeps the game running and makes everything a lot more fun. Travis lets his party have their go when it's their turn to shine. When he was playing Grog, it was more like he was waiting for the time when he gets to shine. Even then, he never stole glory from any of his friends. If it was his, it's his. But with Ford, it's different. I like to think of Ford as the impromptu leader of the Mighty Nine. His charisma skill is the best, and he is very smooth with how he communicates. Is that single horse a, uh, a Mustang? Oh my god. Oh boy. Really? What? Oh, Fire. Can I ask? Can I just ask a simple question? 
However, Travis doesn't steal the thunder for most of the characters. He doesn't talk to every single NPC. He doesn't step in front of everyone. He lets everyone have their turn. He even encourages it. He's constantly asking the party what they should do in situations where they feel stuck. He volunteers others for work he's clearly suited for. He involves every player. This in turn gives everyone a chance to play the game. We all know the player that is constantly trying to jump in the way of everyone to show off their new ability spell or whatever. I have a high intelligence. That means I should be doing all of the smart things. Eh, not always true. Did you ever think, hey, maybe I can use my intelligence to teach someone else in the party to be more intelligent, instead of always thinking about yourself? Travis does. His moments with Bo and how he's attempting to teach her how to be more charismatic is amazing. You're aware of it. When you compliment people, it sounds like a fucking insult. Is that intentional? Oh. Um. It was what? just an observation, like commenting on the office window. Can I try with you? Yeah, go for it. You're it's very really attractive. Nice. <laughs> yeah, so let's start with maybe like a little smile on the face. You know, it's always a good starting point. Try again. You're really attractive. Oh man, you look constipated. No, you know, is that worse somehow? What if you did like, um, Shit. you ever winked at anybody? You're really attractive. <laughs> We'll, we'll keep working. No, that okay. still wasn't yeah, it? No, Fuck. it's okay. All right. It really shows how much of a leader Ford is and how he cares for each of the Mighty Nine. And this also makes it really fun for Marisha, too. Travis plays his characters to work together with his party as a team. In turn, this makes for a far more enjoyable and fun game for everyone. If you are ever having trouble with your party and you feel like everyone hates you or your character, take the Travis perspective. Maybe you should start helping them and working together. You know, in the game where the entire point is teamwork. Travis lets this game happen to him. Whenever he rolls, he rolls with it. Uh, yeah, duh. Everyone knows this, Jacob. Not a hard one to figure out. Yeah, except Travis works out even his bad rolls into being awesome. Oh, dog, I need your help! Uh, 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 <laughs> Reckless great weapon master! Uh, a one! Yes. A one! A natural one is an auto fail. I, I cannot. I cannot. What is going on? <laughs> Travis takes his failures with a grain of salt. He plays up his success and failures. Natural ones suck. But it's okay. A critical success is great. Mediocre roll maybe doesn't give him everything he wants, but psh, Travis doesn't care. He got all he needed. No, that is no, not necessary. No, it's, it's all right. Let me, let me try it on my own first, for dignity's sake. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and make a uh, dexterity check with a disadvantage. That's a natural one. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone goes like, oh, and you turn around. Sorry, friend. Sorry. Yeah, that's a purple heart. Sorry, man. Should have left man. me and Yasha pick you up. No, I've got this. Resituate. A little bit of a glance. <laughs> All right, try again. <laughs> that's another natural one. <laughs> <laughs> and as you pull upward, there's a sound as sand just goes scattering into the sky around, <laughs> emptying the bag and just pouring over you oh. into your eyes. And you Two shit throws in a row, can't get any fucking worse. <laughs> All right, so. Come on, come on. Oh. Yes, 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 no. yes, no. yes. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> Regardless, his success or failure is always met with a smile on his face. This innate ability he has to just shrug off the bad stuff can make the difference between an annoying player and a great one. As a D&D player, rolling with the punches is a necessity. You have to be prepared for failure to come around the corner and punch you in the face with titan stone knuckles. There's no room for you to be upset with your roll and make it everyone's problem that you are not rolling well tonight. Although the fact that Travis is loyal to his dice makes me love him even more. Oh, this back and forth. <laughs> is really good. Also, no, yeah. I'm glad we're getting all this information. No, no, no. There's no <laughs> fucking pigeons yet. <laughs> 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 How did it go? Did you get the handwriting? Stupid pigeons. Did you get the handwriting? <laughs> 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 yeah, but I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> yep, got it. Oh, but Just... actually, do you think you could go back and say that you forgot to ask a question? The whole point of this was to find the High Richter's handwriting as like, well. I understand that and these maybe... two are really busting your balls, and I commiserate that with that. But we do, we do need, in fact, to ask. Now, see, if you ask nicely, yeah, things will happen. I walk back up to the door. <laughs> <laughs> D and D is about failure. It's also about victory. But you can't have a victory without failure, and you gotta accept that. 
you have to be the bigger person and go, who the F cares if I rolled a two on my initiative? How can I make this interesting? How can I roll with this? What does this mean for the game and my character? This train of thought will set you aside from a good player and a bad one. Travis loves it when his friends do awesome stuff and he plays it up like nobody's business. Oh, come on, baby. That is nine points of bludgeoning oh, yeah, damage. Oh, yeah, I'm out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh shit. Oh, no. <laughs> right. Right sure, most give the Inspirer title to Sam, being the bard he was in Campaign 1, but out of game, Travis is the number one fan. Every time somebody does something slightly creative or interesting, he's cheering them on. Sometimes the game comes to a little bit of a slog, <laughs> not Travis. He's hyping up those attack rolls and reacting to those awesome spells. And in turn, it makes everyone feel a lot better. It's been a long week and I keep getting fucking shit. This is the Winnie the Pooh of, of Kraken. Okay. <laughs> just trying its mild calisthenics. All right, so it creates a lightning storm nice that us. strikes you guys. <laughs> just being nice and it tickles. Travis is the hype man of Critical Role. You should watch this guy during combat. He pays attention to everyone's turn and acts as if he's playing right alongside with him. He doesn't leave his friend's sides and he wants to have fun with them. Travis, you are such a great guy. Inspiring your party out of game is one of the best ways you can keep everyone engaged. Get excited when your party succeeds. This game isn't all about you, and you should know that. I like to believe that Critical Role is a shining diamond of a perfect cast. Every person involved is what makes it special. And I don't know what this game would be without Travis Willingham. Sure, he doesn't cry tears of sadness when characters die. Or maybe he's a little harsh to when people are acting dumb. But this is because he's the backbone to this game. He's where all their strength comes from. Travis pushes his friends up. Yes, he takes time for himself and his characters, but at the end of the day, Travis puts them before himself and has fun playing D&D with his friends. Simply, in the end, I want to recognize Travis and his humility, something that I don't think gets recognized nowadays. Travis is one hell of a man that we can all learn from. Thank you, Travis. Thank you.